A little while back, I bought this untested MacBook Pro from eBay for just 50 Great British Pounds. And in this video, I'll be attempting to restore this to fully working condition. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, then stick around. My initial investigation of this device really didn't give me much reason to have hope. Straight away, we had no hard drive. Our RAM wasn't even original factory hardware, our trackpad wasn't working, and our Wi-Fi would not connect. On the bright side, our display was in fully working condition, and it had no big scratches. But that's contrasted by the very deep marks on the top and bottom casing, not to mention the variety of missing screws and dents. This thing was also covered in stickers from previous owners and didn't even come with a charger. So this project started out by doing the obvious. Going online, ordering a brand new SSD for this device and getting macOS installed. Which actually turned out to be a lot harder than you might imagine. Since I didn't have any other Macs lying around for me to update from and the Wi-Fi wasn't working, my only option was to, legally, download a copy of macOS and install it via USB. This did take a couple of attempts, but after a few hours of trying, we were up and running. So now that we finally had macOS installed and confirmed that all the mission critical components like the display, CPU and RAM were all functional, it was time to take this thing apart. Upon disassembling this Mac, I quickly realised the included 2GB of RAM were not the original factory hardware. I do however plan on upgrading this to 8GB later on in the video. Taking apart the Mac further, we can see that the inside is actually reasonably clean. It's a little bit dusty, sure, but it's nothing terrible considering it's, well, I'm filming this in 2021, so 13 years old? In order to get this system fully restored, we're going to need to take out most of the hardware from the main body. So starting with the ribbon cables, I carefully lifted up the cables being sure not to damage any of the fragile pins. These are really easy to break, so it's important to take care when prying them out of their connectors. There are multiple ribbon cables around the edge of the board, so be sure not to miss any as they would easily snap or tear if you're trying to pull the logic board out too early. Once I had all these cables disconnected, I moved on to the fans. These weren't actually too dusty and spun fairly freely. This system has two fans, each of which have three screws you need to remove. Once removed, you can disconnect the cable for the fan. This simply lifts upwards and disconnects with ease. You can then take the fan out of the assembly and place it to one side. With this done, I've begun removing the screws from the logic board, working my way around the edge to ensure all seven screws are removed. Once this was done, you can begin to gently lift the board. There are still two more cables connected on the underside, so before this board can be fully removed, we need to ensure that these connectors are safely disconnected. And with that out of the way, here comes the dirty part. It's time to give this logic board a good dusting. Taking it outside to avoid filling my house with 10, 11 year old dust, I gave the PCB and heat sinks a good seeing too with my compressed air canister. Loads of dust came out of these, but hopefully this will help the system to run smoother and quieter. Next up, it was time to turn my attention to the Wi-Fi issue. To access the airport card on this model of MacBook, we need to remove the display assembly. I'd love to be able to replace this panel entirely as it is really badly scratched up, but unfortunately I haven't been able to find any for sale at the time of recording. Well, actually, that's a lie. There's actually a couple for sale on eBay, but they're also far too expensive for what I consider reasonable for restoring this Mac. Perhaps if one becomes available at a more reasonable price, I'll make a follow-up to this video, but, well, for now, we're gonna leave it as is. To remove the display assembly, I started by unscrewing the three hinge connectors on either side of the MacBook, and then removing the brackets holding in place the cables. With these removed, the display lifted off and we could set it to one side. The airport card, which handles Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connectivity for the MacBook, can be found underneath this plastic cover. And so removing this by sliding to the right and prying upwards, we can reveal the cables and connectors inside. Attached to the airport card are two antenna cables and one data ribbon cable. Removing these, we can unscrew the airport card and put it to one side. Our replacement airport card can now be positioned and screwed into place. With the connectors back in place, it was time to reconnect the display assembly. This was a simple process of following our previous steps, but this time in reverse. Before we reassemble any further, we still have the troublesome issue of the trackpad. To remove this, we need to remove the chassis divider by removing a series of screws positioned along the frame. With these removed, the divider easily lifts out, giving us greater access to the trackpad. There are a series of screws holding this in place, and with these removed, we can lift up the device and slide the original trackpad and its ribbon cable out of the device. 
The replacement track pad was actually reasonably difficult to position, particularly because of the shape of the ribbon cable and sliding it through its slots without tearing it. However, once this was done, we could resecure the track pad with the original screws. This now leaves us in a good position to begin reassembling this MacBook. And on that note, it's time to take our logic board from earlier and place it back into the chassis. The first step is to reconnect the power cable on the underside of the logic board. Once this is done, I slid the logic board back into position, being careful to ensure all ribbon cables are above the logic board so that they can be reconnected and are not left trapped below the board. Before anything can be screwed into place, I needed to ensure that this last connector on the underside of the board is reattached first. Whilst tricky, I did manage to get this back into place by using the tip of a spare screwdriver to carefully position and push into place. With this done, we can now focus on connecting everything else back up. And so, going around the edge of the board, I reconnected each of the power, keyboard, trackpad and other connectors. Finally, I reconnected the display connector in the bottom left corner of the logic board. This is a particularly delicate connector and needs to be secured into place with the built-in clip. With this done, I then went and dusted both fans to ensure that they were clean and well balanced. There was a lot of dust built up in these relatively small fans and so hopefully this will improve their operation. Reattaching them to the logic board and screwing them back into position, I then moved my focus onto the RAM. I had attempted to install two identical 4GB sticks of RAM for a total of 8GB. However, this caused macOS to fail to boot and so the best I can manage was one 2GB stick and one 4GB stick for a total of 6GB of RAM. I'm not sure why the two 4GB stick didn't work as they're both definitely working and identical. Originally, this MacBook was not validated for running 8GB of RAM, but in the years after its release, it was verified to be capable of a maximum of 8GB. With this upgraded, it was time to reinstall the base plate and put back in the SSD and battery. And then I just had to clip the battery cover back into place and the laptop was completely reassembled. The issue that we have here is that now we need to turn our focus to the outside of this device. And as you can see, it's absolutely littered with scratches, marks and stickers. The stickers and marks we can likely get rid of. The scratches on the other hand, well, they are so numerous and so deep that we would need a replacement top cover. And well, I'm yet to find one of those at a decent price on eBay. So instead, I'm happy to settle for the next best thing. We can start by replacing some of these worn and tired rubber feet. Two of these are actually in pretty good condition, so we're only going to be replacing the other two. By using a screwdriver to pry up the old remaining plastic pieces, we can then take the replacements off of the sticker sheet and position them on the base of the laptop. Then I had the tedious task of removing the stickers. It would have been great if these were nice and easy to remove, but instead they refused to come off and left a sticky residue. So prying them up slowly with my fingernails and then soaking them in isopropyl alcohol to remove any remaining stick, these stickers were removed in just a couple of minutes, even if it did take a bit of blood, sweat and tears. Now we're almost at the point when visually this laptop won't be getting any better. I won't be able to remove these marks and scratches, but I can at least make the top feel like new. This stuff is actually designed for cars, but it works well here too. I took some of Meguiar's Ultimate Compound and a microfiber pad and used that to buff out any minor scratches. It won't save the looks of this device, but it will certainly make it feel much smoother and much more like how it would have felt coming out of the factory. I then cleaned the display with another microfiber pad, but this time I used some generic window and glass cleaner to remove any of my fingerprints and smudges. So now we're done. Now I'd be very tempted to go out and buy a skin or decal for this laptop to cover up that scratch top cover, but as things stand at the moment, I'll leave it as is. The laptop is now fully up and running with the trackpad and Wi-Fi now in full working order. And if you ask me, this thing is running great. Sure, it might be, how old, 13 years old now, but it still performs like a champ, especially with that RAM upgrade and a brand new SSD. If you did enjoy this video, then be sure to let me know by leaving a like, and if you really hated it, then be sure to let me know by hitting the dislike button twice. Now, I appreciate this isn't my usual style of content, so if you do have any mixed feelings or any opinions you want to express, then be sure to leave that in the comment section down below. I always read all my comments, so even if I don't reply, you'll know that I read it.